So today we're gonna test a new solar generator by Hisolo. Hiso oh my gosh. Hisolis. 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 And this is a solar generator on wheels, and it has an MPPT, pure sine wave inverter, and a lithium iron phosphate battery. So we're gonna test it and then rip it apart and see if it's worth our time. So first on the front, there's not much to see besides the inputs. We have the AC input, a DC input for car charging, and then a DC input for solar panels up here. And on the side, we have a main power switch, a state of charge meter, a DC 12 volt Anderson plug that can handle 33 amps, which is really convenient. You could even run a DC fridge with this. We have a DC power plug, USB cigarette lighter adapter, and then the AC output is right here and you can turn it on by pressing the switch. And this is rated for 1000 watts or 2000 watts peak. So pretty simple, we have the outputs on this side and the inputs on this side. And you can actually connect this unit to an app. So let's try that out real quick. And on the Play Store, it's called Gin Mate. And once you install it, you can open it up. <laughs> and why does it show me the weather in random pictures of families? That's very peculiar for a solar monitoring app. Anyways, let's try to connect it. So under management, you press add device. And my home Wi-Fi is called Wi-Fi gone wild. Let's wait until this thing loads. And it's down at the bottom, DP1000IL. So let's quick add. Now we're gonna go to the Wi-Fi tab on my phone and connect to it directly. And then refresh, still nothing. Oh, there we go. Oh wait, where'd it go? And now it's working. It shows the state of charge, the current for the AC output, the voltage, the power, the DC power, all sorts of stats actually. This is pretty cool. And I think I can actually control the AC output from this app. Yeah, it says, do you wanna turn off the AC output? So let's see if it does it. And it did it, that's cool. So pretty basic stats. If you have a van or RV system and you have this hidden away, you could connect with Bluetooth and see the state of charge or how much solar is coming in. So I removed the cover and there is a third party inverter. They just slapped somebody else's inverter in here, which hopefully it has proper cooling. I know there's fans on both sides, but we're gonna have to open this up a bit more to see. And here is the battery. This is a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate. And you can replace this battery or hook up your own battery. So if this thing fails after a couple of years or something, you could swap this out. And they're using a 175 amp Anderson connector. Think about how many systems these days are using these now. Big Battery is using them and quite a few other solar generators. And they're using four 10 gauge conductors that lead to the battery. I'm guessing this is because these conductors can attach to the BMS easier, but I wonder if that crimp is solid. Oh, it's solid. Yeah, they use a hydraulic crimper. It looks really good. So this is a power supply, but it does 48 volts at 7.3 amps. So you guys won't believe this, but these three wires go up to the AC input and this power supply outputs 48 volts DC. So we're gonna have to open it up some more and see where this output goes to because this battery is only a 12 volt battery. So I'm guessing that the output of this goes to a solar charge controller or something. So yeah, we need to open up the other side now. We have a lot of stuff in here, guys. So the DC output is a blue and a yellow wire. Let's try to find it over here. This is high voltage, by the way. Do not do this at home, you can die. So this inductor in this circuit, this goes out to the solar input, so this is the MPPT. And this board actually looks good. It has a conformal coating, and these components, there's some cheap capacitors, but everything else looks pretty nice. And up here is the Wi-Fi antenna. It goes down to this module that connects to your phone. And I still can't find that blue and yellow conductor. So that 48 volt output actually goes into the solar charge controller. And the input shows charger and PV. So this is just a converter circuit or multiple circuits. I wonder if this is true in PPT. Let's hook up um, a fake solar panel. And I recently destroyed my 60 volt power supply, so we're gonna have to use a 30 volt. And it comes with a pretty hefty PV input cable. This is pretty nice, actually. It says it can handle up to 70 volts. This is very easy to reverse the polarity, so do not try this at home, you guys. Woo! 
and it's charging, but at a pretty low rate. So it's rising, but rising very slowly. This has to be the slowest tracking MPPT circuit I've ever tested. Still rising, we're at 63 watts. If this was a pulse width modulation, this voltage would drop, but it's trying to track the power point. I'm trying to find the maximum, but it might take a second. We're at 214 watts, but it is taking a long time, man. It's been like five minutes. It's actually looking pretty good. We have maximum output on this power supply. So it did pass the test, it is a true MPPT. This would drop down to like 15 or 15.5 if it was a cheap pulse width modulation. And we have a huge inductor on this board, so it looks good. But I am curious if the PV input is paralleled with the power supply's output on the other side. So let's test that out. And it's not. So there's multiple converter circuits here. It's not just a single one and all of them are paralleled. That's nice. And because these are separate inputs and they're not paralleled, let's plug in the AC adapter and see what happens to the charge rate. Uh-oh. So it turned off, turned back on, and now it's charging with AC which means you can only charge from solar or from an AC outlet, which is a downside. Pretty much all of the solar generators on the market today can handle multiple input charging sources. Look at this, you guys. There is a huge relay up here. And I personally do not like using relays for solar power systems because the holding current or the standby consumption um, of having this coil on uses power and these heat up. And it is mounted nicely, but yeah, this is not the most efficient way to do it. But that makes me wonder, what is controlling this thing? Is it this control board circuit or is it the BMS? Because I heard it click on and off when I tried a different charging source, which that's kind of strange. I guess we should take this battery out and look at the BMS. It just had a baby. A baby boy. What if it doesn't have a BMS and that disconnect is only for low voltage or something? I don't know, I, I can't tell. This seems very confusing compared to other units that I review. It stinks really bad in here though. I think these are the same cells that we used in the Ruksu batteries last year. And they are the same guys. This is from the Ruksu pack last year or maybe two years ago, I forgot when I tore that apart. It even has the same color heat shrink and everything. Same bus bars. I could look at the barcodes, but I don't care that much. And something to point out is look at where this main positive wire is running. If you have high vibration and it were to run through this wire, which this is high quality insulation, but I would never have a conductor on a main terminal like this. This is not very good. Let's try to open it up a bit more. But the BMS is mounted nicely. You have two layers of fiberboard on both sides and it's a 150 amp BMS. But I don't see any temperature sensors on this. You know what, this thing smells like the Ruksu too. I wonder if it's the same manufacturer. So this is without a doubt a beefy BMS and the soldering connections look good, but I don't see a temperature sender anywhere. They obviously have the high temperature protection sensors on the FETs, on the heat sink, but yeah, I'm not seeing one for the battery cells. We only have five conductors going out for balance leads, so we don't have a temperature sensor there. But the good news is these are 100 amp hour cells and they do pull full capacity, but I, I don't like this configuration with these wires and no temperature protection. Not a big fan. Let's try to put it back together again. And I don't want to waste my capped on tape, so we're going to use some Harbor Freight electrical tape. <laughs> Ta-da! Uh-oh. <laughs> Did I break it? Oh, nope, I just had to turn it on. It works. <laughs> that scared me a bit. All right, let's slap that cover back on. And that was pretty easy to put it back together. Usually I do the teardowns at the end of my videos, but this one, I've never heard of this company and I wanted to do a teardown first to see if it's even worth our time to even test. And I must admit that being able to charge from only one source at a time is a huge downside and having that relay in there was not that great. 
but for the price, this thing's still pretty good. I think van and RV people will like it because it's on wheels and you can move it around. Or if you have a little stand at like a farmer's market and the battery does not have low temp charging protection. I think it's great that they're using lithium iron phosphate, but I think they could have redesigned this a bit better. And also having the AC input power supply connected to the input of the DC converter system for charging the battery with a big relay. Like there's so many losses in that system, it just makes me hurt. But they have some other units and I wanna test those out. This is like the cheapest and smallest one. They have one with a low frequency inverter and we're gonna test that out next. But the biggest benefit of this unit is the price. It is insanely cheap. The price of this whole system with inverter, charge controller, everything is the cost of like a standard 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate here in America. So I have to give them credit in that regard. That is just incredible. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video. If you have any more tests that you want me to do on this unit, or if you want me to cover this more, um, let me know. But I feel like you guys got the idea from the teardown. So I hope you guys liked the video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.